Hi everyone, it's Sarah from StampyMoodLove.net. Thank you so much for joining me again today. So today I wanted to show you these gorgeous um, little note cards that I was making during the week. Um, I did a blog post about it um, during the week to show you how I'd sort of um, decorated these. Well, I'd actually done four, five note cards and envelopes um, and I've now made a sixth in the beautiful Highland Heather. Um, and as you can see, I've just literally been using up all my hoarded um, DSP um, for the background panels, um, either using the Gingham Gala DSP or our Colour Family DSP. They come in packs of six by six inches and the well-written um, thinlet dies for my thanks and my leaves and did this gorgeous little um, rooster embellishment on each card. I actually needed a bunch of thank you cards because it was my son's birthday um, during the week and I wanted to be prepared um, to send them all out straight after his party. Um, but basically, I decided I made all these and I got carried away and did it in all the rainbow colours and then I thought it would be really lovely to make a box to hold them all in. So I, this is the design that I came up with. It's a pretty um, basic designed box, but as you can see, I've gone to town with the DSP panelling. Um, I think it looks really smart and it's got a magnetic, well, it's sort of held behind this little rooster embellishment on the front of the box. Um, and then when you lift up the flap, there's also a magnet there holding it in place. And there's just room in there to fit all your note cards. Originally, um, I made it to fit five, but I can actually, fit all six of these cards and envelopes into the box. I'll just show you. It's the five and that's the sixth one. And as you can see, I just also um, decorated the um, envelopes, the matching envelopes with the DSP as well. So that one goes in as well. And I've used those Facity Gems um, embellishments, which are really quite deep. So if you did, if you wanted to use a flatter embellishment or no embellishment at all, you could probably get maybe anywhere between eight and ten, um, and that just slips behind there like that. So yeah, you can definitely fit six in there, um, but possibly more if you use less embellishment. So I thought it came out really um, well, and I thought today I'd show you how I made the box, but this time using the Highland Heather Gingham Gala paper um, that was shown in the last card I had there. I'm bringing in my scoreboard and a piece of A fold cardstock. Um, the long side of the A4 cardstock, I haven't actually trimmed it down, and that measures 11 and 5 eighths of an inch. Um, and on the short side, it measures 8 inches. Okay, so I may as well start scoring on the short side. So to begin with, we're going to score at 1 and a quarter inches on both sides. And then turning your card to the long side, we're going to score at four inches, five and a quarter, nine and a quarter, ten and a half, um, and that's all our scoring done. So now I'm going to take my bone folder and burnish all of these scored lines. So that's all of our burnishing done. And now um, we're going to cut into the score lines. So to begin with, um, on this sort of end, end panel here, we're going to actually remove both corners of the cardstock here. Okay. Um, so you're left with um, these, these sort of, this flap at the end and that's going to be coming over as the top of the closure of the box. So next I'm going to cut up these score lines here. And we're going to mitre in on this flap and these flaps here. Okay. 
Okay, so that's the shape we're left with. I'm just going to flip this uh, onto the other side and start to apply my tear and tape. And then I'm going to just remove all the backings. Okay, and now we can start to put the bolts together. So I'm going to just tuck these little flaps into the straight edges that we haven't mited in on. And you just want to tuck it edge to edge. And edge to edge again there. And then these sides are going to just fold in and tuck inside this bit here. Oh, I forgot to mention that I was actually I actually used thick whisper white cardstock for this. Obviously, you're absolutely able to use coloured cardstock. Because I decided to panel the whole thing out and um, with my DSP layers, I decided to keep it white. I quite like the way that looked. Okay, and that is our um, card holder made. So that was really um, simple to put together. So next, we're going to put our magnets on. Um, so I've got my two magnets here and here. I guess um, the magnetic closure isn't absolutely necessary because on the box that I showed you earlier, I've actually created that flap behind the embellishment as well, which would also kind of keep it closed. But I quite like the added security um, of the magnets as well. So it's entirely up to you if you use them or not. And I'm just gonna take a glue dot and my magnet, lay my magnet to the glue dot. And I'm just going to place that in the centre of the front flap, like that. Give it a good press. Then I'm going to let my second magnet snap to it so it's in exactly the right place. And I'm going to take another glue dot and just place that on the back of that magnet. And then you want to just Fold shut the box, making sure your edges are all lined up. And give that a little press. And you should be able to just, oh, it's not taken. Try again. Doesn't want to come away just use my um, paper piercer that's it and then just give that a press down really firmly as well okay so then your magnets are in place and click together perfectly like that and now I'm going to come in with my panels for my decoration so there is quite a lot of paneling and I'm coming in with my first two panels which will be the front and the back of the box so I'm using Highland Heather cardstock as my base and that the cardstock itself has been cut at three and three quarter inches by five and a quarter inches. And the DSP mat, um, I've actually used my stitched rectangle framelits. So I'm just out of camera there. If 
I bring in my um, stitch rectangle framelit, so I flipped the one that I used upside down so we know which one it is. So it's literally the seventh largest die in that re the larger rectangle set um, I've used to cut that panel of DSP out. If you don't have these framelits, um, you can actually just cut, the, cut in the DSP by a quarter of an inch. So if you wanted to cut it yourself, the measurement of the DSP would be um, three and a half inches by five inches. Okay, so I'm just going to take again my tear and tape. And just make sure that when you place it down you're looking overhead to the front of the box you get it in the center and also you want to make sure that magnet is going to be covered up so, just like that and then we can do the back side Next I'm coming in with my two shorter panels, the sides of my box, and this cardstock has been cut at one inch by three and three quarter inches, and the DSP on top has been cut at three quarters of an inch by three and a half inches. So again, I've already put my tear and tape on the back of these ones. And then for the final three panels, um, and that's going to be obviously the front, top and bottom I'm doing as well. Up to you whether you do all of those sides, um, but the measurements for these strips are the card is cut at one inch by five and a quarter inches and the DSP on top has been cut at three quarters of an inch by five inches. And again, I'm just going to remove all the backings and get those adhered onto the box. And that's the final panel gone on. Okay, so now our box has been fully layered up. What I like about all these panels is that sort of adding a second layer of reinforcement to the box as well, making it really super strong. Um, as I said, you don't have to do the base, but I quite like the idea that if it was sitting on somebody's desk, it would still be looking pretty from that angle as well. Um, now I've gone ahead and using this gorgeous um, delicate lace edgelet die, um, I went ahead and cut that ahead of time in my Highland Heather cardstock. And I'm now gonna use that to decorate the um, front of my box and I've just done a strip of tear and tape around the back to adhere it with so I'm just going to remove that back in I'm just going to pull the um, box slightly off camera so I can just line it up Okay, and I've managed to get that in line um, with the edge of the Highland Heather here. So it kind of looks like one piece, um, but obviously you can just trim off the edges if you wanted to. Okay, so that's just, isn't that beautiful? I just absolutely love that die. I've never used it before now, and I don't know what's taken me so long, but it's really pretty. I'm definitely going to be using that again. Okay, so that just sits down and the magnets snap into place. So all that's left to do is a little bit of stamping. So I've taken the smallest of the Be Mine stitched heart framelits, so pretty these, these dies. I've cut my heart from a piece of rich Raspberry cardstock, which I'm simply gonna adhere, adhere with a dimensional, one large dimensional at the base of my heart. 
and you just kind of want to put it at the in the center of the lace edgelet die cut okay so that holds it nicely in place as well I'm just gonna give that a press down So that's why I was saying it's up to you whether you use a magnet because I'm sure that would hold it closed anyway. Obviously the magnet's just extra secure. And now I'm going to stamp my rooster. So I've taken the um, little rooster image from Woodward's stamp set and a piece of scrap whisper white cardstock. And to colour in my rooster, I'm using my Stampin' Right markers. Um, and I'm going to start with my Highland Heather at the top using the thicker brush, I'm just going to colour over the back of my stamp. Next, I'm gonna come in with my Blackberry Bliss and do the middle. And finally, my Rich Razzleberry and I'm just going to do the bottom of the rooster. Just try and make sure that every part of your stamp has been coloured in. Okay, and now I'm going to breathe over the back of the stamp to moisten the ink again, and that just helps the colours to blend really nicely together, um, and we should get quite a pretty effect when we stamp it, so that's what I'm going to do now. It's called the huffing technique. and I'm just going to stamp that down onto my cardstock. I'm just gonna hold it for a minute just to let the ink kind of meld together on the back of my stamp. And then when you release it, you've kind of got a multicolored rooster. I really think that's a pretty effect. And I'm now gonna die cut my rooster out with the matching die and I'll be back in one moment. So I'm back with my die cut rooster, so cute. And I've got my, my um, Wink of Stella pen here and I'm just going to paint over the top of him, give him a little bit of sparkle. And it sort of helps to to blend the colours in a bit more as well. If I hold him up to the camera, hopefully, you can see how sparkly he is. Very pretty. Um, and then what we're gonna do is flip him over and I want to add a couple of dimensionals on the base of his body. I want him to be adhered flat to my heart. So I'm just going to use a little bit of Tombow, Tombow on his head. Take off the backings. And then we can just slip him in. just finishes off the box beautifully and that is my box made so um, yeah I'm really I think that's a really pretty um, note card holder and I'll just transfer my note cards into it now so as I said I've got six here with matching envelopes yeah, and there's still, actually, there is still room. I think you probably could get maybe one more in the way that I've embellished it. But as I said, if you do flatter embellishments, you'll get even more in. And yeah, that's it, all good to go. So I really hope that you um, enjoyed the project today. If you're interested in learning more about the products I've used in the video, you can go over to my blog, which is stampingwithlove.net, um, and you'll see a list of all the products and supplies that I've used. If you click on any of the images, it will take you straight to my online store, where you can learn more about them or purchase them if you'd like to. So thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you very soon.